Let's do it. Three, two, one. Ooh, welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of Full Press Radio. This is September the 27th, 2021. With you today is myself, Carl, and Stevie Nick. And Stevie Nick's phone is now silenced. You're welcome, Carl. Thank you. Hey, it's nice it's close. to know. Was it? It's close. We almost, well, we did start the show with my phone unsilenced. And I mean, you know, you're going to get at least one phone call during the show. You're a busy man. uh, I mean, when Hollywood calls, Hollywood calls. What are you going to do? Exactly. I mean, maybe, maybe a team needs you to play some preseason hockey because we, not only are camps opened, but we've got actual hockey games happening. Yeah. I have one on my TV right now. No. Which, who are you watching? Toronto, Montreal. They're on, they're on TSN right now. Is it just me or has the quality of broadcasts for preseason games gotten much better? I would, yes. Because it's like it's like the actual broadcasts. Yeah, and like the, the picture is very good. The camera angles are pretty much just normal. But even like, like, I remember when they used to have weird jerseys on or like different jerseys with patchwork on the back for numbers and names and stuff. Like it all looks very normal. Yeah, it's... It is normal. I mean, there's still like weird numbers out there because who has any idea? Training camp numbers, right? You gotta, yeah, you gotta earn it, I guess. You, you do have to earn it. That's what all the GMs say. Yeah, and the not, coaches. Yeah. So. so you gotta just, Plus, all the analysts are analyzing these games as if it's the real thing, as if anybody cares about them. As if anyone cares. And the only thing that's really happening, and I, I mean, I, I'm very interested to get your thoughts on this one, because we are like not even a full week into preseason hockey, and we had three suspensions handed out so far this preseason. You've got guys, these fringe players trying to show their worth, and it is not going well for yeah. someone. I mean, it happens every year. These guys are trying to make an impression, right? show up on the coach's radar, earn a, like you said, earn a spot. But the game, you know, the game's changing. We don't really like highlighting that that rough stuff anymore, hey? I mean, highlighting, some of them have just been brutal. So, I mean, and there's not, there's not much to say other than get rid of it. Because you know when you're not going to make the team? when you get suspended in the first preseason game and don't get to play for the rest of it. Yeah, that's good. You'd think that some of these guys would have learned from Nazem Kadri. Wait till after the season mm. and then take out those plays. Post-season, not preseason. Exactly. Kadri's figured it all out. He's already it, been paid. That's true. You're not I'm not working for free. Right? That's I it's very true. Well, thanks for reminding me of that, Nick. Now I'm going to be in a mood the rest of the show. Uh, you know who else had, I mean, players getting hurt, obviously had a bad week. Players getting suspended had a bad week. Jack Eichel also did not have a great week. Yeah, no, he didn't. So he showed up to camp for his physical. He did not pass his physical. Almost like the guy who's been asking to have surgery all off season wouldn't pass a physical. And they're still on either end of the spectrum when it comes to the surgery. Buffalo's not budging. They don't want him to get this disc replaced. They want him to get the fusion surgery. And he wants to get his disc replaced. And so they said, Jack, you're no longer the captain of our team. Yeah. Gone. The C is gone. That's right. But like, can you blame them if he's, if he's, gonna sit this one out well he's he said he doesn't want to play for the team he him and the team can't agree he's not going to play he's not healthy enough to play and what the team has said he needs to do to be able to play he won't do yeah and it's pretty well known by everyone that he's essentially done as a saber no one expects him to play another game in that jersey again no no but uh so when when then when does the, I know last week we said, or a couple weeks ago, I forget when, said like, just it'll be a random time. Is that still what you think with the new things that have come out? That's still what I think. There was a report that came out this week. I can't remember whose name, who, who, who reported it out, but there was a report that came out that said, you know, there's a bunch of teams interested, like a half a dozen teams that they're not that far off. They're just getting stuck on how many games can he play? How many goals scored? Because they want to put conditions on the trade. 
based on those things. As they should, right? Like if he's not going to play for a certain amount of time, then I don't want to pay as if he's going to be full Jack Eichel. But I'm kind of curious to know if there's any teams out there who will allow him to go get the surgery that he wants. Maybe at what point? At what point does he... Because right now, he is like he's part of the Sabres organization. Yes. Right? And maybe I, maybe I, I mean, there is got, there has got to be a rule around this. So he has how many years? I'm trying to, trying to see here. So he's got five more years left on this deal. Yes. If the Sabres say you're not allowed to get this surgery and he says, I want this surgery. Is he sitting out hurt? Is he like, at what point do the Sabres say we're not paying you to sit out anymore? Because $10 million is a lot of money to have a disagreement over. Yeah, agreed. I'm not quite sure what the rule is there. I assume it's very complicated and that there's insurance involved um, when it comes to the team. But uh, I don't know what the rule is because like he's under contract right absolutely i don't think they can suspend him without pay for this i think that if this goes on long enough they'll try to i don't know man it's it's kind of it's kind of dicey if i was them just trade him let some other team deal with it if you're that adamant about this just Cut him loose, let him go, get him out of there and let someone else deal with it. Yeah, I think that's a, a good option, right? Is to just cut your losses while you can, but uh we will we will see where that goes. We also had, I mean, this is one that I think is a, a much shorter conversation. Uh Evander Kane had, I you mean, know, he's continually been in the news for uh situations that are not on the ice. Uh so more off ice issues for Evander Kane this time. Uh, actual charges being laid um, in regards to uh, assault. And so obviously, we don't know if he did it. Good riddance is what I say. Yeah. Yeah. The You know, the bad news just keeps getting worse with this guy. And I'm just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what else to say about it. Like you said, this doesn't have to be a very long topic. I, I read some of the stuff that was put out there and it's it's not it's not pleasant it's not good they got to get him out of there uh he's played his last game as a shark right he i think so yes has when and how does he play in the nhl at all any right anymore uh probably calls up the carolina hurricanes (laughs) hey guys i'd like to play hockey again and they're like hey he's a good hockey player he'll play hockey again right like we know we've seen it over and over again with, with teams in this league. If there's a player out there that's going to help them win, who's very good at hockey, they they'll look past all the all the noise around his personal life. So say I think the only situation that I've ever fully seen someone get like straight up blacklisted is Dennis Weidman. Is the only situation I can think of where a guy went from like being a rostered player to checking a ref and then not being a rostered player anymore. What about that defenseman from LA, Voinov? Ooh, yeah. He got blacklisted, never made it back, eh? Montreal tried. Yeah, of course they did. But no dice on that one. Yeah. So you're right. There there are are very few. Yes. You've got to do some pretty bad things. But yeah, you're right. Montreal might, you know bring him in Carolina might bring him in. There's definitely teams that are more likely to look past issues. Well, Montreal could use a help on ice. We'll talk about that later in our division preview. Absolutely. Uh, all right. We also got some signings this week that finally happened. Yeah. Some teams starting to shut the doors on uh, any remaining questions. So let's start with the let's stay with the Sabres. Rasmus Dahlin, three years, 6 million per a bridge deal that does not make him a restrict or an unrestricted free agent at the end of it. I actually love this deal. Like, do you think that this guy's a superstar defenseman? I think he 
can be, but I do not think he is presently. So we saw like the highest tier of defensemen this year going for long-term contracts at 9 million AAV, right? Right. Kale McCarr got six years, 9 million. This is a good deal for Rasmus Dallin for the next few years. Yeah, I think the, it seems very fair for both parties, to be honest with you. For the Sabres, right? It keeps that ticket price down. He is he is good. He is not at the top level of those guys that were getting those deals this year. So it is you know, it also lets them have that possibility of extending him into free agency and and taking more of those years back. Bit of a prove it deal, do you think? I think I mean absolutely it is, right? I think all bridge deals kind of amount to that in the end. Um and I think he will prove it, but he hasn't he hasn't proven that he's worth that much money right now. No, he's been in, I think he's found himself in some unfortunate situations with this team that on other teams he would have thrived. Uh, so I think he's a real deal. I think he will be a superstar defenseman. And I think in two years, people are going to be laughing at this AAB. Oh, yeah. When, he, when he's what 23 years old, coming up to the end of this deal and they're signing a new one. And what else is interesting with it is it doesn't, Actually, let me confirm this before I, I say the wrong thing. Cause, uh, cause with these deals, the way that it works is the salary of the last year is what becomes the, uh, ticket price for any sort of, uh, arbitration or offer sheet. No, not an offer sheet, uh, qualifying offer. Yeah. Um, and so I just want to see how they backloaded it. They, so his value of the final year is 7.2 million. So not super backloaded. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like the seal. Do you like the deal? Yeah, it's good. Uh, I like it for both teams, right? It lets him have some more say if he wants another short-term deal with the Sabres. If he doesn't want to be part of the team, he can. But also get some paid right now. Probably one of the best moves the Sabres have made in the last three or four years. For an organization in need of a win. This is one of them for sure. Oh, it's such a sad win too. Uh, let's head over then. Kaprizov back with the wild. As we all expected, the deal finally got done. Five years, $9 million per. Oh, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's, but they had to do it. They had to. There's, there's no way around that. No. You need to bring your best player back, your Calder winning player back. Uh, and because of, especially because of, I mean, obvi- coming from a rookie, you wouldn't normally expect this, but because of his age, uh, he, this will be his, this brings him up to free agency. Yeah. And I think that because of his age, that, that made this amount a little easier to swallow because. If he's a rookie and you're basing this off of how many games did he play last year? Like 40, 40, maybe 55. He played all 55 games, 55 games. That's a pretty small NHL sample size, but at 24 years old, you've seen him play in the KHL. You kind of know what you're getting from him at this point. So I think it's, it's safer for them to do that versus doing it with an actual rookie who puts up those numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to, to sign. And typically, right. A rookie, you have a longer time to try them out. Cause if a guy comes in on the third year of his rookie deal and does that, that's surprising, right? You wouldn't yeah. want to hand this out, but, um, if they come in in their first year. You have an extra two to really suss it out when see what's going to be the best. So, uh, definitely I think a good year, a good deal for the team. Good deal for him. Obviously gets paid quite well for a, a good season and. I, th- I don't think either side will regret it. Oh, I'm sure they would have liked to add a couple of years to it, but. But here's the thing. Would you? If we're looking, I mean, looking at where teams are these days and especially with the wild, right? They're in like a weird spot. Five years from now, when he's 29 years old. Yes, he'll still be at his peak, but I would much rather be like, hey, you know, if he's still chugging along, sign him. But I don't want to be that team signing him to a seven-year deal when he's 29 years old. Because if he continues like his pace expects, that's what's going to happen. And I don't want that. You know, but teams love signing those deals. 
Teams and they love sh- locking them up for as long as possible. But they shouldn't. I know. The, the Wild can save themselves from themselves by letting him walk when he's 29. He may have just saved them from themselves by not adding those years onto his deal. That's right. And I, I think, I mean, signing this to like a, if they had a gone an eight year deal, keeping him around till he's 32, that also, like, that would have been great, right? I don't yeah. think that's an issue. Then for sure, he's not, but then he's not getting that big second deal, right? No one's signing. I mean, no one should be signing anymore a 32 year old to a seven year deal, no matter how good you are. But at 29, when this deal ends, right, he'll be 29. How, like, he, he's probably not going to get much more than 9 million. He's definitely not going to get long term. At 29? Absolutely, yeah. he could. More than $9 million? I mean, let's see what the salary cap looks like in yeah, nine years. true we've enough. Got, we've got a new TV deal starting. When is that TV deal starts next year? Yeah. So new TV money coming in? No, this that's, season with ESPN. That's right. This year. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got new TV deal starting, which is going to get some more money back. You know Uncle Gary's going to get one more lockout in before he retires. So <laughs> it'll be there'll be money to be had. Absolutely. Got the Olympics coming up. Do they make, does that? No, have, they okay. make the, I was like, the Olympics. I was like, I literally, that went through my head. I was like, how else can they make money? Oh, that like no. international hockey tournament that they try to host. No, the Olympics is more of a long-term marketing play. But I mean, we're talking about five years down the line. Maybe, maybe say, the, payoff the 2022 that Olympics pays off. Uh, yeah, for sure. All right. One last deal. This one, we head to Columbus. Elvis Merzlikens, he did not need this new deal yet, but the Jackets lock him up ahead of free agency. He was going to be an unrestricted free agent. Now, five years, 5.4. Which I think is fine. It's not a, it's not a crazy goalie deal. You know, at, at, at least with Merz, Merzlikens, you kind of know what you got. Like, we're past the goalies or voodoo stage, mostly. Mm-hmm. You know, the uncertainty maybe isn't there. So I think 5.4 is totally fair value for, for what he'll deliver as a goalie. I think what's interesting here is they've made their goaltending choice, right? Between the two, between him and Corpus Allo. Yeah. Well, and I mean, Corpus Allo, uh also, like you said, also an understudy free agent after this year. Certainly a chance. I mean, you could bring back both of them. They split time pretty evenly last year. Um you know, Merzikins had a down year. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them both back. Is that all right? Is that a good goalie tandem, though? I guess so. It's, it could be much worse. All right, I'm on board. Welcome aboard. <laughs> I like it. All right. Well, that brings us then to the end of our signing section. We got one more thing we want to talk about. The NHL uh, is came out this week and said that they are tightening the rules around the enforcement of rule 59. And as I mean, Nick, you're a, a big rule book aficionado. Uh, rule 59 is what? Cross checking. Rule 59 is cross checking. And the re the reasoning behind this, so they're tightening up enforcement of it. And then they say it's designed to promote offense and reduce injuries, which I mean, that seems we're going to call more penalties and we want people hurt less. That seems like exactly the reason that you would tighten up officiating any rule. Yeah. I mean, and hopefully you're only calling more penalties at the start and then the guys kind of figure it out and stop doing it all together. Yeah. Or reduce doing it. Yeah. And so I think we'll see, I mean, we, we, they released a video and had a bunch of examples about like what's good cross checking and what's bad cross checking. Uh, but what's interesting is just like, the, the ruling that they the officials may allow players to use a shaft of a stick to guide or push an opponent without assessing a penalty. However, if the guiding or pushing is judged to be excessive, an interference penalty may be assessed. So uh, you got all kinds of like judgment calls because you can't call every cross check a penalty. No, you can't. But that's, I don't know, that's part of the ref's job is using your judgment. The only thing that would concern me is because cross checking is literally the situation where I see diving happening the most. And I would be very concerned if they, as they're cracking down on this, I would also simultaneously be cracking down on diving. And if someone's diving, I'm only taking one enough of this, like 
this guy dove and I'm handed out a cross checking penalty and a diving penalty. If you dive, the crush, there's no subsequent penalty. I like that a lot, actually. Because if they didn't dive, then there wouldn't be a penalty called. Exactly. Right. So like it's got to be a trade off. You, you can't, I mean, in theory, yes, you can embellish and there be an illegal hit, but it's very hard to judge. Is that like an actual cross check while a guy's flopping on the ice? Yeah. I mean, I suspect a lot of this is going to come from activity in front of the net, right? That to me seems to be the area on the ice where this is most prominent defensemen battling for, you know, that, that area right in front of the goalie with Absolutely. whatever forward's been put there to block the goalie. Yeah. Yeah, There's been so, some nasty cross checks in that area of the ice. I mean, absolutely. We, we've seen them to the neck. We've seen them to the head. We've seen them, I mean, just in general, right? We've seen guys cross check and yeah. hit the post. So th- th- there needs to be some sort of, of reining that in. But um, I just don't want, I don't want to watch soccer, essentially, is what I'm saying. No, I I agree. Although sometimes there's diving calls, like embellishments called. And I think I could see how it would be called embellishment, but it's so far from like the theater of soccer embellishment. Oh yeah. I, cause we don't, I, we don't often see the like flailing on the ice and then getting up and being fine. Yeah. And very rarely do we even see guys like, you know, go parallel to the ice cause they've jumped. It does happen sometimes. Yes. But it's pretty rare. No one's dolphining onto the ice usually. Uh, I think I think the biggest embellishment we see is like like a bit lip. You get a you get a high stick and you're like, ah, I need some blood here. Go back to the bench, bite your lip, and make it happen. I don't know if I could do that. That's why you're not in the NHL. Yeah, I know, and that's such a low stakes thing too. <laughs> like I should be able to do that. I. I also don't think like I wanted to do it right here, right now, but I felt that feels entirely unnecessary. That's so unnecessary. We'd have to pause so you could no, put a I towel would, on your face. I would just look, I'm wearing a, a hockey shirt right now. Um, <laughs> Swipe it on your shirt. Get it some blood on there. Yeah. <laughs> but then I have, then I would have to go change because you're not allowed to have blood on your Jersey. So. Well, it also means I'd be a terrible wrestler because I like, Hearing stories of how they have to like cut their head open, couldn't do it. What about if you did um the the circus one? Did we ever find out how that went with Darren McCarty? I'd never heard. No. And to be honest with you, I didn't look it up. <laughs> you you don't want to. I don't think I want to know. No. Well, there we go. Let's take a break. We'll be back on the other <laughs> side previewing the Atlantic division. Three, two, one. Oh, so just coming back to what we were talking about before the break, I had to, I didn't have to, I chose to delete my search history of that Wikipedia page for the circus. Uh, so you didn't find, during the break, you didn't find out how that fight went for him? No, I didn't. No, well, you know what, maybe as the show goes, depending on Should how I? And- you want me to look it up? Hey, well, while I, while I talk about what we're doing right now, you see what you can find. Um, we're going to preview the Atlantic division. We, these divisions like the rest, they're back to normal. This one has a ton of Canadian teams, which brings on this added twist because we're seeing more and more teams as, you know, vaccination information comes out and those rules are being set forth. Uh, we're seeing a number of teams, uh, especially affected in this division, right? And we'll get to it when we talk about your Red Wings, Nick. Um, but just this is one where this is is really going to be an issue. Having Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal all in this division definitely makes it so that uh, crossing the border becomes an extra challenge for teams. So I, I didn't listen to any of that, so I don't know what you're talking about. The wrestling match is on October 1st, so it hasn't happened yet. Ooh, Friday. And it's at 11.30. And they've actually adjusted their artwork now. It says PM. Okay, that's good. That's not an afternoon affair, so... no. No, so it's 11.30 p.m. this Friday, if you can stay up that late. <laughs> I mean, for me, that's 9.30 at night. That's true. That's like prime time for you. Yeah, just hitting my stride by 9.30. So, well, there you go. So tune in for this Friday. Uh, we're going to start at the bottom of this division, which begs the question. 
I mean, I, I can think of, I think it's two teams that I'm really debating about who's at the bottom of the Atlantic. Don't even. It's not two teams. It's one. It's very clear. Is it? Yes. Is it? Okay, here we go. On the count of three, we're both going to say the team that we think is at the bottom of this division. Okay. Three, two, one. Sabres. Buffalo Sabres. Oh, man. I thought you were going to make me swear at you. And you would have had to beat you would have had to beat it. <laughs> well, okay, so we've already talked a fair amount about Buffalo today. Um the return on the Jack Eichel trade notwithstanding, what is there that can bring the Sabres hope? What should a Sabres fan be looking for this year that's or people who are forced to watch the Sabres like seven or eight times a year if you're in their division? What should they be looking for for joy? The number one draft pick. I know they're getting sick of 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 cheering for that, but like I don't know. Like looking at this lineup, watching Darlene should be interesting. You know they've got some young guys. Um, uh, Dylan Cousins is is he making his debut or did he play last year? He played uh, last year. Yeah. You know, Dylan Cousins, uh, who else here? <laughs> Casey <That's laughs> <Kisi> Middlestad. <laughs> is I mean, it, they're, in a, they're in a tough spot, man. They should get a very good return for Jack Eichel, though. That's what will, you should be looking forward to. Right? You'll get picks. You'll get roster players. You'll get prospects. You'll get it all for Jack Eichel. Um, you also get to watch Craig Anderson, who, like, just generally a guy that every team now you might not be excited hockey wise, but like personality wise, Craig Anderson is a guy that appears to be well liked by his team and fan bases. Uh, sure. I guess that's fine, but I had their goaltending marked as big red X needs help. Oh, well that's also needs because improvement. That's also because Craig Anderson is their number one goalie heading yeah. into the season. <laughs> Yeah, but I guess if you like, you know, if you watch the games till the end, which if you do, good for you. And then you watch beyond that to the player interviews and the media sessions. And yeah, you get to enjoy Craig Anderson a bit, I guess. Yeah, so Buffalo Radio listeners, look, on the ride to the fight on Friday night, you can listen to the radio station there in Buffalo and get the lowdown on what's happening. Yeah. I really think that this Jack Eichel returns going to make a huge difference in how I think of this team going forward, because there's other teams in this division that are bad that we'll talk about in a minute, but you know, they've laid a foundation that in a few years, they'll be good. I don't really see that foundation with the Buffalo Sabres on their roster right now. No, no, it's not there. That's and concerning. It, and, but like they've got, I mean, Owen Power is going back to college this year, so he'll be on this team in theory next year. Yeah. The return for Jack Eichel will be on this team next year. Next year is the, I, I know it's terrible to, we're not even through puck drop and we're already like next year is the hope for this team. But next year is where you find out how well this organization's done. It's going to be a long season for the Buffalo Sabres because they are the undeniable worst team in this division. Hands down. Uh, maybe not hands down, but yes, we, I mean, we, but neither of us denied it. So it's hands down. Now, maybe this is where you make me edit because right now I am putting the Detroit Red Wings below the Ottawa Senators. Yeah, I won't make you edit. That's where I have them too. Okay. But 30 seconds ago, I, I talked about, you know, bad teams laying a strong foundation down so that in a few years they'll be good. I think the Detroit Red Wings are well on that path. I would say so. Yeah. That definitely. Right? Like there's, there's players that are coming up through their system that aren't even going to play this year that are going to be part of their core, like Lucas Raymond. Then they've got guys like, um, uh, Maurice Sider, who's going to debut on the team opening night as a defenseman. Uh, they've got Joe Valeno. I was, Valeno, who I was be hoping. Up and down. When you said that, I was I was like, is he starting in net? Like, 
I'm glad you pointed out on defense. I yeah, on, on defense, on defense. Okay. All right. But w- let's talk about their net because that's another point of hope for this team. Ooh, tell me more. Alex Njedeljkovic. He finally became, he became Red Wing and that's all it took for you to learn how to say his name. That's all it took. I learned it the very same day. And now you can just call him Ned. <laughs> I know. Which had I known that before, I wouldn't have learned the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so he's in net with Thomas Grice. And we saw in Carolina, I mean, the Hurricanes are notorious for a goaltending tandem. You've got a great one here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Grice wasn't great last year. But the other goalie in that tandem was Jonathan Bernier. Who you I still maintain was very good. Exactly. Yeah, you incorrectly maintain. You hold, you hold no. on to that. That Jonathan Byrne, like, wait, are you sitting here and telling me that he was better than Grice? Yes, I'm going to say that without looking anything up. No. Can I'm, yeah, I'm gonna say that. Let's I'm let's pull up their save percentages last year. Now I'm gonna pull their gold saved above average. So you pull gold up saved above average. You well, you pull up their on me. You pull up their boring stats. I'll pull up some fancy <laughs> stats. And I'm also going to remember how to spell Grice. Um, and we'll see. Because I don't think that it's significantly close. I think that Grice was much better of a goalie last year. Okay. Can I give you their boring stats? Are you ready? Yeah. Grice played in 34 games. Bernier played in 24. Okay. Okay. Grice's save percentage, 0.912. Bernier's, 0.914. Bernier was nine eleven and one. Grice was eight fifteen and eight. Yeah, that's so definitely. Bernier had more wins, and he had a point zero zero two percent better save percentage. Okay, so fancier stats. Yeah, Bernier played in twenty four games. Grice is the others. Bernier did have a 4.7 goal save above average versus a 3.4 for Grice. Uh, So last year, you are correct that Bernay did have the better season. I think all the numbers we pulled up show that. Um, But that does not, to me, looking at all the rest of it, because like Grice before going to Detroit, the, the two years before that, he was better on the island. So is it, I mean, the Islanders are very good at finding goalies, but Bernier also, this was the best he's had for a season since he was a 25-year-old Toronto Maple Leaf. Like, yeah. this was the best year he'd had. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he suddenly it, figured out how to play hockey at 32. It, it, was, it, it was amazing, Carl, and I'm not putting up their careers against each other and saying Bernier is the better overall goalie. Last year, Bernier was good. I'm not even saying he was great. He was good. And he was better than Grice last year. Fair. Nonetheless. He's gone. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't Ned, matter. <laughs> Ned is better than Bernier. And Grice. Yeah. So you got that. Uh, what's the what's happening with Tyler Bertuzzi? Uh, it's more like what's not happening with Tyler Bertuzzi. He has opted to not receive his COVID-19 vaccination, which means he cannot cross the border this year in a division where there are three Canadian teams. So he'll be sitting out roughly 10% of the season uh, due to not being vaccinated. Now, is that a thing where, because if, if you are making that choice, are teams still going to be paying salary for those players, for them sitting out? I believe so. But what do you, what are you hearing from Red Wings talk about kind of how that's going to fall out? I have not heard anything about the salary. I was under the impression that when they, when the league and the players union came out with their vaccination guidelines or regulations or whatever, any, any time you had to sit out as a result of this, I thought it was without pay. Okay. So for him to do that, I mean, if there is a long Canadian road trip, there is certainly a chance that he can play, right? Because it is still a two. It's definitely no. Sorry, now I'm remembering. I did read about this. It's without pay. He's walking away from five hundred thousand bucks this year. Okay, so when he misses that ten thousand or the, that ten percent of games, it is essentially yeah. every game in Canada. Yep, 
he will be sitting at home watching, not being paid. Yeah, I think it's a total of nine games. Yeah, so that I mean that works out to be about just just under ten percent of his salary is five hundred k. So yeah, so uh, you know, in pure Red Wings fashion, there's no real like drama about this. Everyone's pretty tight lipped. You know, they're not getting much info from the GM or the players. They keep it all pretty internal. Uh, So who really knows what's going on behind the scenes in terms of what conversations have been had? Yeah. And I mean, well, Tyler Bertuzzi is one of the better players on this team. Certainly not not a season where not having him becomes an, an issue. Doesn't matter. They didn't have him last year either. Yeah. So it'll be it'll be fun. He was injured. Yeah. So yeah, Detroit number seven. I think that one's pretty easy. All right, there you go. So now number six. This one also feels easy to me. Agreed. The Ottawa Senators. Yes. Now this to me is another example of a team that's bad, but has laid the foundation to be good in a you know a short amount of time. Actually, we we forgot to talk about something the Senators did. They made some news this week. They made a trade. They did make a trade. What was that trade, Carl? Uh, that trade was, let me pull up the full detail, because I know that there was multiple pieces in that trade. Uh, but we'll talk about that once I pull those up. But the Senators got better last year, right? Like this was, this division had a a core of, or would have had a core of the Sabres and Red Wings at the bottom, right? And even the, the Senators in that Canadian division did well enough for themselves that it wasn't a complete embarrassment. And so I think, I mean, I think that we'll see that progress continue this year. I totally agree. They still got to get Brady Kachuk done, which, you know, sh- should be done by now, will be done by the time the season starts. Absolutely. Um, I think. Uh, and they just have a strong core of young players like Thomas Shabbat. Brady Kachuk, who I just mentioned. Um, Tim Stutzley, who actually looked really good, I thought, last year. So, you know, look for him to take take the next step. Um, but all these draft picks are now starting to come up through the system, and we're starting to see them in the NHL. So it's not it's not long now. No. And uh, that trade I mentioned was uh, Logan Brown for Zach Sanford. One not for thrilling. one? Yeah. Not, cool. not, a, th- not a thrilling deal. <laughs> What trade did you see that had all the pieces involved? I thought, I thought, I think I saw the original like rumors of this trade, which had pieces. This one, okay, uh, did not. But you're right, right? Like Shabbat uh, and you know Stutzley, who we saw have a great year last year, had some injury struggles, um, but nothing that I think will become a problem moving forward. But they also still have Matt Murray in net. Yeah, so watch out for me. I mean, last year, what did Matt Murray do last year? Um, 10 wins, sub 900 save percentage. That's not very good. Over three goals. His goals against average is over three. So he he wasn't great. No, and I'm not sure that he will be great. And I, I think that he will... I think he will, before his deal is done, I mean, he still has three more years left on it this year and two more. I think by the time this year is done, he is going to be the biggest thing holding this team back. Oh, it's going to be so rough for them. But the good news is that they can go out and get another goalie. Right? Absolutely. Like, they should be in on the goalie market. Whoever's available, they should be in on that. They're going to have the cap space. Like, if it, it shouldn't be a matter of of money. Well, no. I say it shouldn't be, but it's the Ottawa Senators. Fair. Uh and I haven't seen I mean I haven't seen his development especially through like covid times and where he's at. Um but I am I mean as a junior goalie, uh Mad Sogard that was drafted by the Senators uh was fantastic. He was a lot of fun to watch. And so I I mean I hope that he could become something for this team. Um I'm not sure that he will, but in that but I very much enjoyed watching him in junior. Yeah, that's that's the other end of that um, Merzlikin spectrum, hey? <laughs> He's like too young. That goalie voodoo is still, still a thing, and you don't really know how it's going to turn out. Exactly. I mean, last year he had a 917 save percentage in the AHL. So that's pretty good. 
he's playing in the organization. He's moved over to North America and, and continuing there. So um, huh? I think you, we'll see. He might get a couple games this year. I think with some injuries. Yeah. I wouldn't be. be surprised to see him pop up for sure. Um, especially now that his, his entry level deal will have started in full. So, yeah. um, cause that was, uh, not a thing last year. So there we go. Uh, let's then head to where this gets interesting. This, these are now, I mean, those three teams not vying for playoffs. This, these are the playoff bubble teams, the teams fighting for the wild card. Who do you have at five? I kind of disagree with that statement. I think it starts after this team. Like, I think the at five, it's pretty clear cut the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, I could, I can buy that. I, I don't think any of the remaining teams are worse than the Canadians. Now, the Canadians, I mean, they obviously had a very strong playoff push. Yes. And as it went, we all said, I mean, this is not going to last. This isn't going to continue. They won't do this again next year. So why can't they do it again this year? Uh, Because it's going to be even, it's going to be harder for them to get to the playoffs this year. They're in a much harder division. You know, like, like last year was a perfect example of when people say, all you have to do is get to the playoffs. Because once you get there, you never know what can happen. But right. getting to the playoffs is hard when you have a roster like the Montreal Canadiens. And by the way, three players who were part of that playoff run, Kak and Yemi, Shea Weber, and uh, Philip Deneau, maybe not Kak and Yemi, but the other two are certainly big parts of that playoff team, yeah. uh, are not on the team this year. They are not. Uh, and I mean, pieces that they replaced with Mike Hoffman uh, hurt to start the year. So he's not going to be ready for this team. Also doesn't play center, what they, which is what they need, right? So they brought Mike Hoffman in on a pretty big deal. He's yeah. not going to be ready. Uh, there's talk that Jonathan Drouin will be back with the team. Yeah. He's supposed to be back. Um, really did some... What, I mean, if you didn't read, there was a great article with him, I think with, on The Athletic, kind of going into his journey um, with mental health this past year. A uh, really great article, and I, I encourage you all to go read and, and and hear what he has to say about kind of why he stepped away and and how he's ready to be back. Um, so you know they hope he's back. And up front, that's and and Christian Dvorak, the guy that they picked up from the Coyotes. It's a backfill for Dino. Exactly. Defensively, right? Not not a whole lot. It's where it gets scary, right? Like Jeff Petrie's good. But he's not really like a a defensive defenseman, right? Yeah, and I mean the pairings below that, like this, does not scream playoff defense in any way. No, but did it last year? It was better, right? As much as as much as Shea Weber is not what he once was, Shea Weber is better than no Shea Weber. Yes, agreed. Agreed. So did he show up at, at training camp and fail the physical? Did that happen yet? Or are they still not saying anything? I think that they just like failed him. Okay. Mike Hoffman, I believe, was the one that showed up and failed the physical. Which is crazy. That guy keeps bumping, jumping around from team to team to team, and they keep giving him these crazy salaries. And he keeps moving. Like, is there and a reason this- that these teams aren't keeping him? And this time he got term. I mean, he got just like a one year deal in St. Louis last year, but yeah, now a three year deal with the Habs show up hurt. Yikes. It's a classic Mark Bergevin move. There. Oh, the over the unnecessary overpay. But what is very good about this team, Cole Caulfield, Nick Suzuki, like Nick Suzuki's really come into his own as a centerman in the league. Definitely. So he's going to be very good. Cole Caulfield, like, was it his first ever NHL game in the playoffs last year? Yeah, he he definitely got better like, as the as literally the just went. started. So yeah. he's going to be one to watch. Like, get a full season under his belt. There's some bright spots, but not enough to launch them past the Bruins, the Panthers, the Leafs, and the Lightning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you there. I don't think he is. I don't think that's enough. So let's move then to those four teams. 
we had, I mean, all of these teams made the playoffs last year. And I would say probably all of these teams will make the playoffs again this year. Yes, I would agree with that. Now this four, four, three position is the first time in this division that it gets dicey for me. Well, I'm going to rip the bandaid off for you. Okay. I am choosing the Boston Bruins. See, that's what I did too. When I just like not thinking about it, wrote the rankings down, Boston came out at four. Yeah. But I, but I dug into it a little. I mean, I dug into it. I looked at the, (laughs) at the Bruins roster. They're still pretty good. You know, definitely a downgrade in the goaltending department. Right. And I, I mean, there's still a likelihood that Tuka Rask will be back this year. Not signed as of yet, but that door is open. So that one's a still TBD. Like, that was one of my questions. Is where, where is this guy? What's going on? I haven't heard anything in, in forever. But they're big three. Like, they all had really good seasons last year. They don't and seem to be fading. No, I, Patrice Bergeron will at some point. And I'm I'm done like waiting for him to start to fall off. So I'm just gonna assume he does it, and then one year I'll be like, "Oh, he's finally there, dude!" He was on pace for 34 goals last year. That's real good. That's so good for Bergeron, who's how old is he now? Like 40. Mm-hmm. No, he just looks 40. He's... I bet you he's like 33. 36. But I mean, so you've got. Like those three, right? Yeah. Taylor Hall. Yeah. Back with this team. Right? He was traded there at the deadline. He's back this year. So you've got that making a very strong second line. And, and? Carl, are you forgetting about probably the best player in the National Hockey League? Um, I mean, another player that I'm surprised got term. Nick Foligno, yes, not only got like paid higher than he should have, but also got two years on that deal. I wonder if he started to feel a little creeped out by how much I love him, so he signed with the team that I could literally not love him on. Literally, the team that you will never watch him on. I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure what I should get you for Christmas this year. Now, <laughs> like, I, do not buy me a Boston Bruins puck. Don't buy me anything with that logo on it. You sure? Yes. Okay. I'm positive. I mean, so both him, right? Both Tuka Rask and uh, David Krejci, I don't believe he has signed anywhere yet either, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so those are two guys that like were a part of this team last year um, who are not, right? Krejci, yeah. Krejci, I believe, now that I'm thinking it, he went back to the Czech Republic, so he's not playing in the NHL anymore. So he's done with NHL, retired, moved on. Um, Tuka Rask, uh, injured, not signed yet, but is like around the team. So he will at some point arrive. So uh, this team is worse than last year, which is why I bumped them down a spot. Yeah, I think that's, I don't think that's super controversial. It's just when I think about them and the Panthers, it could go either way for me. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Because, I mean, let's move on to the Panthers then, which is clearly who you're putting at three in this division. Yes. Okay. That's who I've got at three. I also have them at three. But I, I feel pretty confident that this team is legit. They, Carl, we've been saying that for years. <laughs> They've gotten better. How long has Joel Quenville been coaching this team? Two years now? I think this will be, well, it was the same year that Bobrovsky showed up. Yeah, this will be his third year. And I feel like they've progressively gotten better. Well, the second year was better than the first. Now, yeah, that's under Quenville. I think Bobrovsky, there's still some still some question marks on that one. Well, and, and his, his tandem partner, right? Chris Dreger off to Seattle. Uh, that was yeah, the, a big loss for them. But Spencer Knight. You backfill with Spencer Knight. That's that's not bad. No. You're you're very happy to have Spencer Knight as your as your replacement there. And I I'm obviously long term, that's who you want. So But like other than that, this team isn't 
very different, right? Like they added Sam Reinhardt. Yeah, so they strong uh, ad for them. They brought in Sam Bennett at the deadline. They brought in Sam Reinhardt in the off season, yeah. which I think is going to be great for them. Yeah. Uh, they brought in Joe Thornton. We're talking about old veteran presence. They have that twice over now. Who's the other one? It's Joe Thornton twice. Oh. That's how old he is. Wow. <laughs> He's old enough that he counts as two veteran presents. He's old enough that even I'm still like, he's old. You know, normally you think about hockey players and you're like, oh, they're so young because right. we're old now. Yeah. No, he's still old. Yeah, he is so, yeah. When I was young, I remember Joe Thornton still being in the league. Yeah, he too. Yeah, so, well, that's... <laughs> back that's in my time. day, Joe Thornton played hockey. Do you remember when, yeah, back in my day, Joe Thornton was a Bruin. That's how long I've been I following do, I hockey. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at that, kids. That's how long we've been going. I mean, to be fair, we we've, we've been doing this podcast long enough. Joe Thornton was almost a brewer when we started. Well, not we, but you. <laughs> the the royal we. Um. All right, then that leaves us to the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning at one and two in this division. In that order? I, is it in that order? You don't want to go? You want me to go? I, I have Toronto at two, Tampa Bay at one. I also have Toronto at two and Tampa Bay at one. Like, neither of these teams have changed that much. So why would their place in the standings change that much? Now, see, I think, I mean, Tampa definitely got worse this year off season. They lost their third line. An entire line gone now who can you remind us then for who so yanni gord to seattle yeah um who else was on that line blake coleman blake coleman he is now a calgary flame and barkley goodrow who got kicked out of a preseason game tonight who does he play for now can't remember the islanders or the rangers that was who was in the game I'm struggling to remember which team. Okay. <laughs> but they brought in Corey Perry. He's in New York now. And yes, they replaced all three of those <laughs> with Corey Perry. They also brought in Pierre Edward Belmar, who I'm, a, I mean, I very much appreciate what he brought to the avalanche during his time there. So he's now uh, over here. Not anyone who's going to excite you. He is a fourth liner. I mean, we kind of knew this was going to happen with the cap situation. Right? Yep. They had to shed an entire line of salary cap. Somehow that, that had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not terribly surprising. I still think that they're the best team in this division, regardless of that. I, I agree. I think with, with them being worse, the core of this team, the fact that they, I mean, as much as everyone hated it, and as much as it became a meme, they played that entire season last year without Nikita Kucherov. I would rather have him and replacement level third liners than the other way around. Yeah, totally agree. Well said, Carl. Uh, we also forgot the biggest addition that this team made this off season. Which is? Brent Seabrook. <laughs> what is he on the... Was he brought in to... To hang out on Robot Island? He is. He's there. There you go. Um, so he'll be he'll be there all season. Um <laughs> But definitely, I mean this team is good. But the Leafs, let's turn our attention to them, since they are the team that finished second, we skipped right over them and went to the team at the first, which Well, we we saved the best conversations for last. Have you watched I didn't realize it was I thought it came out in October. Have you watched the uh the Amazon show yet? Comes out on Friday, doesn't it? Is it out already? I've been seeing reviews. Maybe this is just media getting oh, early it's media. access. Media reviews. Yeah. Okay. I, th I think it drops on Friday. Okay. I also thought it didn't come out till October. Whew, that was scary. So, I mean, I guess you can start it, right? You finish your day at work. You get off at five. You press play on that. You binge it. 11.30 comes around and all of a sudden it's fight night and you're ready to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you for planning out my Friday night for me, Carl. That's what I'm here for. But okay, so I was kind of wrong about the lightning and that they didn't change that much. But the Maple Leafs, I guess they changed a bit too. I mean, there was an expansion draft. I shouldn't be saying that these teams didn't change that much. <laughs> like right. the Leafs lost Zach Hyman. To the Oilers, yeah. Huge part of their forward core. And I yes. think they're going to feel that one. Mm-hmm. And they lost uh, um, uh, Anderson, not Josh Anderson. What Frederick. Frederick Anderson. Thank you. He's a hurricane. Um, yeah. Yeah. And his performance last year was about as forgettable as his first name. Actually, his performance in general is as forgettable as his first name. So I don't think that one's going to hurt them as much as Hyman leaving is. And they brought in Peter Mrazek to replace I was, Anderson. I was going to say the Mrazek with what we've seen from what Freddie can give them injury wise these last few years, Mrazek being there is a much better situation than Freddie. I agree, but I still think they're going to struggle with consistency from their goals from him and Campbell. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Jack, Jack Campbell was once a hot, hot ticket goaltender who flubbed and brought things back. Time will tell what a second year brings. He looked good for them last year. He did look good. But what's interesting about him and I appreciate it. And I think maybe what, what shocks me about him is how he is so open about his own struggles and confidence because you don't hear goaltender, especially goaltenders, such a confidence and momentum position um, to hear him talk so openly about that. Um, I just, I find that very interesting. It fascinates me. And I, I think because we don't see it, I want to be like, well, you can't be, maybe it's just like the hockey culture is like, you can't be like, you can't show weakness and, and still be good but I want him to be able to show that vulnerability and then rise to the challenge and be like, yeah, like I'm, I'm not feeling it right now. I don't feel confident. I'm going to go get it back. Really good story. It, it's a really good story that I think unfortunately was tampered last year by the first round playoff exit. Yeah. Right. Sure. And, 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 to, and for me, the question around this team this year is not, are they going to make the playoffs or how are they going to finish in the division? Like they're going to, they'll make the playoffs. I think the question is how do they perform after that? Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're getting down to the point that uh, it, it's a shockingly small amount of time until, you know, the Austin Matthews deal is done. And then the murder Nylander and, and uh, Tavares deals are done. Like this core as much as we say like they need to win, they're gonna be gone if they don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh one way or another, <laughs> I think this year is gonna be a, a, a big year for them again. Not not through the regular season. Yeah. Their playoff performance. Because I think depending on how they do there, that is it could prompt some changes sooner than their contracts would indicate. It's actually, I mean, looking at contracts now, I, I find it very interesting. There is not a single player with more than four years left on a deal with this team. So that's their window then. It's there, right? And then who knows what it looks like after that. That's interesting. You can have, I mean, and, and there's only two that are at that point. It's Tavares and Marner. So in four years, in... 2024 when the NHL is debating to send teams to the next Olympics or not um, there will very very possibly I'm not going to say likely but possibly only two guys are still on this team which is wild crazy this could also be the last year for Morgan Riley as well yeah I, which, so, that would be disappointing I know for Leafs fans for sure yeah anyways definitely lots of questions around the team we'll see We'll see how they do. I think they're playoff bound, no question. The fun starts after that. And it's nice. I think, you know, knowing you have that whole season to prepare, you need to be preparing with that end goal in sight. How do we bounce back as a team when we get down in a game with a a long stretch? Having a a full 82 game season again is going to help with that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So 
there you go. That is the Atlantic Division. We have one more preview, which means we're like, but like less than two weeks away from hockey. Yeah, man, it's getting real close. I'm excited. I mean, this next week we might see actual NHL players in these preseason games, which will be great. Um, so, you know, you're watching your first one tonight. I unfortunately am blacked out of that game. I cannot be watching that oh, one. Cause it's on TSN. Cause it's on TSN. So I will have to, uh, I think it's time for us to fire up the old subscription to the streaming service. So we'll get that yeah. going here so that I can too watch an AHL players play hockey. <laughs> There's some NHL players and it's just only half of them. So it's not as fun. Is, yeah, exactly. Well, we'll be back next week. You can head on over to the fourth line podcast.com for more information about the show at the fourth line podcast on Twitter is where you can find us. And as, as things are going up, uh, fire and backup, we'll be a little more active over there. I know throughout the summer, Nick on his Twitter and us over on the show, it's not a whole lot to say. We, we chime in every now and again and, make our little jokes and disappear again. So uh, take the old off season break from social media. Exactly. So we'll be, we'll be getting back into that as, as things go. And we look forward to getting back with you there. Uh, But thank you all for tuning in this week. Thank you for being here for our preview shows. We definitely had a good time diving into them. And next week we have to go into what we've been putting off all preseason, which is previewing the Metro. Is that it? It's time for us to wrap up. Another fourth line show. I know what you're thinking. You don't want us to go. We just took a swim in the Atlantic. We're lucky we didn't slip on Jack Eichel's contract and break our back disc. Ah, that didn't work.